In this video we're going to have a look at how to draw three views of a hexagonal based prism. And just as a reminder of course we know that a prism is a shape which has got the top and the base as two identical shapes and then of course it's got faces and in this case we have a hexagonal based prism with a hexagon on the top and at the bottom and we're going to start off of course with our top view and in previous videos we really we learned how to draw a hexagon constructing it using a compass so we start off with our drawing by drawing that top view and once we've drawn the top view you can see there that I've made a XY line nice dark line exactly 10 millimeters away from my top view over there and in this drawing we are going to go and complete a front view which will be drawn here as well as a left view which will be drawn over here next to it okay that's the correct setup for a first angle orthographic drawing and to start us off once we've drawn our top view which we draw first we are then going to go measure 10 millimeters away from the side of our hexagon over there and we're going to draw another xy line and straight up and we're also going to draw in the 45 degree line which we'll use later to be able to go and find our left view so we use our 45 degree set square and where those two lines have come together we're going to draw out our 45 degree line on the side over here once we've done that our next step of course is to number okay and we're going to take each of the corners we have here and we're going to number it I'm going to number it clockwise starting with one over there and then two three four five and six and what I'm numbering here is I am numbering each of the corners of my shape okay and now if you have a look at our prism of course we know that the top view of our prism we can see six corners okay which belong to our hexagon Okay, but if we're looking at the top view, there is a corner below each of these six corners, okay, which belongs to the base, of course, because it's also a hexagon. So if we take our hexagon, we look at this corner over here, that is one corner, and directly below it is another corner at the bottom over here. So when we go and label our top view, if we started, as you can see, I started there with one, which would be this corner over here as one, that one corner rep actually represents two corners of my prism the corner up top over here as well as the corner right at the bottom over there so when i label it to make sure i've labeled all the corners i have to label the base corners as well so to be able to do that i'm now i stopped at six so over here i'm going to go and put a comma in and label that as one comma seven because corner number one which is that corner up there there's corner number one and then corner seven is the one directly below it and the comma tells me that i see corner one first and that corner seven is behind it okay so that's one comma seven this will be two comma eight that'll be three comma nine four comma ten five comma eleven and six comma twelve that then labels all of the corners that you can see over here in your top view and it labels all of the corners of the base of our prism as well okay once we've done that we can now go and start constructing our front view and to do this we're going to take every single one of the corners that we have here in our top view and we're going to project them using construction lines which you'll remember are light lines and we're going to project them up into where our front view would be okay so if they look like that there's all of our corners now projected up into our front view now remember our usual setup we're going to have a 10 millimeter gap between our views so we're going to measure 10 millimeters there off of our xy line and we're going to go and draw in a construction line there 10 millimeters away from my xy line now of course the other thing that we're going to need for the front view if we have a look back here at our prism again if we take off our top view and we go and flip it over the front view of our shape is going to look like that 
Okay, and we're going to be able to see the height of our prism as well as this baseline over here and that top line and then of course these two lines here which repre represent two of the edges and then of course those two edges there. And of course we're going to need to know the height of this and I'm going to use a height of 80 millimeters for this drawing. So that will be the height from the base to the top over there. And I'm then going to use that height to go and complete my front view. But as we saw here, if I put that height in, you can see that you can clearly see a nice dark baseline and a nice dark top line of the shape over there. So I can start off by going and drawing in that baseline, nice and dark. You can see that that goes in line with those two corner points over there. They're in line with that, for that baseline. And then we're going to go and measure our 80 millimeters up. Yeah, we're going to measure there 80 millimeters up and I'm going to mark that off and then I'm going to draw another dark line at the top which of course represented the top of my prism okay so there we go and then as we could see over here with my prism like that We've got a dark line at the bottom, a dark line at the top, and then of course two dark lines on the sides. So I can immediately draw those two in. We've got a dark line over here on this side. And then we have a dark line over here on this side. Okay, and then of course, again, if we look at our prism, we've got two other lines which we can see which should be dark, which are these two here which come from those two bottom corners up to those two top ones. So we can go and draw in those two dark lines, one over there, and then one over there. Okay, now we're going to take the numbering that we've got in our top view over here, and we're going to transfer that now onto the drawing, the front view that we've got over here. Okay, and now we've got to be very careful, we've got to watch carefully as to how that's going to happen because remember that for our front view we're looking from this direction to get to our, sorry in our top view we're going to look from this direction to get to our front view. So we're going to have a look here, of course we labeled the top points first, so all of our top numbers, numbers 1 through to 6, all of those numbers are going to have to land up here on the top of our shape because they were our top corners. And then the numbers 7 through to 12 will land up at the bottom here because they were our bottom corners. So if we follow, you'll see that point, if we take point 6 over here to start with, there's point 6, we know that that's at the top, so we can label that up there, that's going to be point 6. And then of course point 3 over there, that's going to be point 3 at the bottom. And then this of course will be point 9 at the bottom over here, and then point 12 over there. But now what about all the others? Well now we've got to be careful because we said that we're looking in this direction to see our front view. Okay, that direction. And if that's what we're doing, in this case we're going to see corner 5 first and then corner 1 will be directly behind it. Okay, if we have a look here carefully, if we're looking for our front view, we can see here that corner over there has got a corner there and directly behind it there's the other one over there. There's our other corner. So in this case, this over here would be our corner number 5, which you can see at the bottom there. And the one directly behind it over here would be our corner number 1. So when we go and label this point up top here, that is going to be labeled as 5, 1. Because we're going to see corner 5 first and then 1. Okay, and they're both first. Okay, where they'd be numbered first, which means they are on our top of our shape over there. So over here, that corner there would be labeled 4, 2. We'd see 4 first and then 2 behind it. So that would be 4, 2. And then at the bottom over here, we'd see 10 first and then 8. So that would be 10, 8. And of course at the bottom over here, we'd see 11 first and then 7. So that would be 11, 7. Okay, that then completes our front view with its connect correct numbering. And now we're going to take our front view and our top view 
and we're going to go and project a left view. And to do that, we're simply going to take each of our corners in our top view. We're going to project them across onto our 45 degree line. And then where they hit our 45 degree line, we're going to project those straight up into where we want our left view. Okay, and then the next thing of course we're going to do is project each of our corners across from our front view and that's only two lines here like that and now what we're going to do is is we are going to follow each of our numbers and we're going to mark off each of the corners before we go and draw our left view okay so if we follow across here you'll be able to see that if we follow point one there's point one we follow it across and up and then find our point one in the front view and where those two meet over here we can tell that that corner over there of course is going to be corner number one okay that over there will be corner number one and then of course we can do the same with every single one of them if we take corner number five over here we take five across and follow it up and we take five there from our front view and we follow it across we'll be able to see clearly that that point over there is going to be point number five Okay, and then the same thing here with six, there's six, bring that across, project it up, and bring our six across, and we can clearly see that that point over there will be point number six. Okay, but now again, with our left view, there are going to be a couple of points that are behind each other. So if you have a look here in our top view, there's point six, and directly behind it is going to be point three. Okay, we can clearly see that the two are going to land up with each other. If you take three across, and three across over there you bring those two up you'll see that that is also point three and we label it as six comma three because if we look from the left hand side over here you can clearly see you're going to see number six first and behind it is going to be number three the same thing will happen with point 12 and point nine which are on the base you'll see point 12 first and then point nine so if you project those across and you follow the same procedure you'll find that you will have point 12 comma 9 over there if you do the same thing over here you're going to project four across and up and you'll find that you're going to have four at the top here and that'll be five comma four why five first because if you look here from the left hand side okay you're looking from the left you'll see point five first and then only point four behind it the same thing of course here will happen with one and with two so you'll see point one first and then two so that would be one comma two and then the same with seven and eight on the base over here if you bring up seven and eight that'll be seven comma eight there seeing number seven first and then eight and then of course at the base over here we'll see eleven first and then ten so that point there we will label as eleven comma ten and now you can clearly see what that left view is going to look like okay that's going to be the left view of our shape with a single line down the middle, our top line, our bottom line dark, and then the two edges on the sides. So we can go and finish off that left view with its correct labeling with each of the corners. Okay, that's the two sides, the dark line in the middle for that edge in the middle, and then of course we can go and darken the base and of course we can darken the top of it there we go